but what I'm going to talk about mainly today is um, our coral reefs, believe it or not. So when I hear the word coral reef, I usually think of like, like the coral reef structure, right, and all the fish and everything that grow in that. Well, what's interesting is here in Hawaii, especially around the islands of Maui and Lanai and Koho'olawe um, and Molokai, we actually have a lot of area covered by this, but we have even more area covered by sand. And in that sand, if you go right to the edge of the reef and you kind of look out, out over that sand, what you actually start to see in many areas are these halamina meadows. So if you go into those meadows at about 30, 40 feet depth, what you'll see are these big things of lilu jutting up out of the sand. And then if you go just a little bit deeper, what you get are continuous patches, or what I call a meadow, continuous patches of algae and sand going all, you know, as far as the eye could see. And so at this point, you might be wondering, well, what is this stuff? Well, it's halomita. And, well, gosh, what is halomita? Well, it's a green calcified alga, or limu, and there's over 30 species worldwide. It only occurs in really warm water and tropical areas. And here in Hawaii, we have at least seven species described. There's another species currently being described. But the three most common are these three right here, the halomita discoidea, Halamida opuntia, and Halamida conolawana. Now, um, when you think about Halamida, there's, it can grow three different ways. And one way is it can grow in the sand. And when it does, it has what we call a large hold fast, or it's like a big root system, growing down deep into the sand and then this upright part. Or it can be a sprawler, so it can grow across the sand, sort of woo, laying out like that, and then it attaches either to the sand or to rock along the bottom, or it can be a rock grower, the little small hold fast, again that's like the root system, attaching onto the rock and growing over the rock. And if you think about that, then those three really common species are actually like Halamita conorowana, growing entirely in the sand, Halamita opuntia, growing like over rocks and sand, sprawling out, and then again Halamita discoidea, growing over the rock. But what I'm going to talk about mainly today is a species called Halamita conolawana. And if you look at it, what it has are these little segments that are calcified. And it form what we call axes that are just like branches. Um, and this whole upright portion that grows out into the water we call the thallus. So these are just like basic algal terminology terms. So it's like the algal body. And then it has this big hold fast, I keep talking about this root system that comes off. This is actually what we, this is one of a super plant. So the plants usually aren't this big. This plant was about that tall. But this hold fast, actually, I was digging and digging and digging to try and get it out. I got this actually right offshore from here and about uh, 60 feet of water. And I just finally got to the point where I couldn't dig anymore, so I had to yank it out. So the, it's made up of, um, what we call rhizoids, again, which are kind of like roots, that sort of branch out and go through the sediment. And what's amazing is this entire plant that you're seeing right here is all one cell. It's unicellular, which is really hard to believe and wrap your mind around, but there are no cross walls in that entire organism. So the whole thing is one big, gigantic cell. And Halamita conolawana is endemic to Hawaii, so it doesn't occur any, el anywhere else in the world, but there's, there's no Hawaiian name for it, unfortunately. We, you could eat it, but it'd be like eating Tums. <laughs> it'd probably not taste too good. But, um, it's not, but it's eaten by fish and other things, and it typically occurs when it forms those big meadows and deeper water. So most people aren't aware of it. Um, and then it can reproduce both asexually and sexually. So by asexual, what I mean is that, um, for instance, um, this is this plant that I found, and I was swimming along, and I saw it looked like two or three little plants poking up out of the sand. So I started playing around with it and you know, digging around. And as it turned out, when I pulled it up, at one time, it was actually all one plant. But then at some point, it got buried, probably by a storm, and turned on its side. And then these little parts started growing back up through the sand. And because it's all one cell, it has the ability to, diff to turn anything, any little part of it, into another part of it. So it's actually at the base of this plant right here, turning what used to be a segment into a, a holdfast. So each, like in time, if I would have left this plant buried, then each of these little 
plants would have become a whole new plant. So it has the ability to reproduce asexually, also by fragmentation. So I would like chop this off, or say a fish came along and took a bite out of it and carried it over here and spit it out. That little fragment over time would form a new plant. So it's really amazing in how it can grow. And then when it reproduces sexually, it can do that too. And when it does, it looks really cool looking. So it, what it does is it takes all of its insides, and it, because again, it's one cell, so it can do that. So it takes all of its insides, and it forms these little branches all around the outside of the thallus. And it takes all of its insides and turns them into something we call gametes, which are like seeds or kind of like spores. And then at a certain time of the day, just like how coral go and spawn, the halomita will spawn. So I think it's early in the morning for this species, but we don't even really know when it does it. And it boom, releases like fireworks, all of those little gametes, out into the water column, and they fertilize in the water column, settle out, and become a new plant. So it's really neat. So if you're ever in the water and you see a plant that sort of looks like broccoli, it has all these fuzzy little branches on it, it's just sexually reproductive at that time. And it happens all the time. In some places like Australia, they've got it down to where a particular species spawn like at 6.05 in the morning. This species go, and at 6.37, this species go. And other species sometimes go in the evening. But actually here, we, we really don't know much about uh, reproduction in this species in Hawaii. Like what time does it go, or does it go all the time, or how much of the population gets reproductive at a certain time. So it's, there's not much we actually know about it here, except it does reproduce sexually. And as was mentioned, it's calcified. And so when it dies, either from like a sea urchin coming along and eating on it, or a big storm comes and uh, rips out a bunch of plants, or for whatever reason, when it dies, it makes sand. And when it first dies, it sort of has these chippy, chippy-like appearance. It just looks like little chips, all those dead segments. And then over time, they erode and make this really beautiful white sand. So besides some of these general features, there's actually not much that we know about Halamita conolawana. So when I first came here, I was really interested in it because I happened to be diving out with someone in these meadows, and I was like, wow, gosh, these are amazing. And I kept asking, well, gosh, well, how, how deep does it occur, and where does it occur? And I'm, geez, how long does it live? And, and you, know, just, you know, how fast does it grow? So if, you know, you rip it out, does it come right back, or does it not come back? And well, how much sand does it really make? You know, does it just die and then make some sand and that's it? You know, it's manini or is it like, does it really make a lot of sand here in Hawaii? And, well, you know, you've got all these meadows in the sand. What use are they? You know, do they play any role in the coastal ecosystem? Or are they just all these, you know, algal meadows hanging out there and nothing really occurs in them? So, you know, once you start asking questions like that, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I think I could do a PhD on this. So, <laughs> so I started and, you know, formulated some hypotheses and, I've worked with people like Skippy and with Lynn and then work with Ross and then work with Mandy on answering some of these questions and trying to start pecking away to figure out what role does Halamita Meadows have here in the Hawaii ecosystem and, you know, are they important? Do they matter? If they all disappeared, would it matter?